What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm gonna show you how I made this. Beautiful, delicious, smoky, juicy, amazing smoked pork steaks on the offset smoker. Coming up. This is some meat. Pat it dry. And what I got here is a pretty awesome looking cut. This is a copa roast, which comes from the pork butt on the pig. And if you look at this cut, it may look familiar because in the competition world, they refer to this as the money muscle and it's got so much good striations of fat in there. And it's really nice looking. You know, we got a little bit of a fat cap on top as well. And it's basically just the best part of the pork shoulder. And this really is a great cut for the barbecue. You know, it's really marbled, nice and fatty, pretty good size too, not too big, but you can do a lot of things with it. Oftentimes you'll see it cured and used in charcuterie. You could make pulled pork out of this, although it seems kind of wasteful. But when I look at a cut like this, the first thing I think about is pork steak. And I've been debating all day whether or not I should tie this up or not, because it would look really nice if it was in this good barrel shape. And because we're gonna be cooking this thing pretty tender, we don't want it to fall apart. But at the same time, I wanna get some nice smoky bark on this thing. And if there's string all around it, I'm gonna lose a lot of that bark when I take it off. But I think that's a risk we're gonna have to take. So, butcher's twine, snip. And we're just gonna go under here and give it a nice taut tie. Helps to wrap this string around a few times so it doesn't slip. And just get it nice and tight. Beauty full. Then, this is a really long piece of string. We're gonna take a little loop-de-loop -loop here and go under it again and cinch that nice and tight. Keep that process going until we have this thing fully wrapped up. Oh no, I don't think I made my string long enough. All right, we'll just have to make this one a little wider. And once you get to the end, just gonna tie a knot. And you may notice I had to do no trimming on this thing. It's because I got this from Porter Road and they always do such a great job with their butchery. Very happy about that. Gotta say, looking pretty good. Loving the shape on that, nice and tight. And if you are looking for a cut just like this one or any other cut of meat for that matter, you can in fact head over to Porter Road, who's sponsoring this video. Porter Road is an online butcher shop based out of Nashville, Tennessee that really specializes in high quality meat, whether that's beef, chicken, pork, or a whole bunch of other things. And I've been shopping with Porter Road for several years now and I absolutely love their product. Whether that's their whole carcass dry aged beef, their heritage breed raised on pasture pork, their chickens are phenomenal, and I source my meat from a lot of places but whenever possible I do love to support actual farmers that are working hard to raise meat the right way because not only is it good for the animals and local economies but also the quality of the meat is so much better than any of the commodity stuff you're going to get at the grocery store. And if you've never bought meat online before I highly recommend it. It's just like going to the butcher shop where you can browse through whatever cuts they've got but my favorite part about Porter Road is that you're going to find things so you're definitely not going to find locally. Like this copa roast, hanger steaks, pig wings, marrow bones. They make some really good beef stock and they're always coming out with new cuts which is really fun to play around with on the backyard barbecue pit. And like I mentioned I had to do zero trimming on this roast which is super convenient because not only does that save me time but I also produce less food waste and that's because everything is hand butchered in-house by people that really know what they're doing. You know every cut I get from them is always perfectly squared off and just looks like someone actually put some care into it which is much appreciated. And if you head to their website I have a curated list of all my favorite cuts that they sell and you can also browse around and pick whatever you want, whether that's some unique cuts like this or the classic pork chop, ribeye steak, that sort of thing. So if you're in the market for some high quality meats, head to porterroad.com where using my link, you can save 15% off your first order. Again, link in the description, that's porterroad.com where using my link, you can save 15% off your first order. Thank you, Porter Road. Now, before we go ahead and throw this chunk of meat on the old smoker, we need to get some seasoning on it. And today I'm going with some good old fashioned Chud's Barbecue SPG because we're throwing this on the offset. And like I said earlier, my goal is to get some really nice smoky bark on there. So. Nice heavy coating with this stuff all around. No need for a binder. The seasoning appears to be sticking pretty well. Nice black pepper coating. And of course, folks, we're not gonna forget the sides. That would be a rookie move. Flip it over, roll it around. Nice. And that is looking pretty much perfect to me. Now, typically when talking about pork steak, it's all about that direct heat flavor. I mean, that's why I designed the mini chud box in the first place. But I've done plenty of pork steaks over direct heat in the past. So today I'm gonna try something a little differently and I'm gonna throw this thing on the offset. And as much as I'd love to fire up Old Reliable here, it is a beautiful day and I don't feel like hanging out at home alone, but I just got word that there's an offset fired up down at the chud shop and they're doing some cooking. So I think I'm gonna head there and just throw it on. Made it to the chud shop, got the old 65 fired up and that's got some beef cheeks on there. We're gonna pop this bad boy right about, you know. Got a classic post oak fire on here, rocking right around 275, which is pretty perfect. So we're gonna let this go for a good couple hours. Matt, why are you cooking beef cheeks? Uh, I got a fancy dinner in Palm Beach, Florida to do. Sick. In other news, it's uh, begun to hail. <laughs> good Lord, look at that chunk. Not ideal smoking weather. No, absolutely not. This is why I came here to avoid this. Yeah. Wow. 
Joe, what do you do in a rainstorm when you're cooking barbecue? Cry. You know what I do? I make Bones eat something weird! <laughs> Alright boys, what's on the menu today? So this is silkworm pupa. This is a snack that my dad grew up eating. Oh, oh they're big. Whoa. Not at all. Gnarly, dude. Yeah, oh, I thought they were gonna be smaller. Nope. They're squishy. <laughs> Oh, all right. I didn't learn my lesson from the shrimp. No, you didn't. It's not, it's not the worst. No, but it's not. Good. It's not good. It's not good, but it's not. They shouldn't put these in cans. I agree. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is one of the gnarliest uh, bones. Eat something weird. As far as, uh, as far as appearance goes, anyway. It comes in waves of like really bad and okay. It has like kind of like a. <laughs> like an earthy. <laughs> it just like yeah, keeps exactly like. The, uh, but what is that flavor? It has some sort of meat flavor. Oh, yeah. I forgot they were in juice. Dirt <laughs> and also not peanut, but the peanut skin. Pupa? Pupa. Pupa. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect it to like pop. Yeah. Yeah. Your uh, peanut shell note is yeah. pretty spot on. Yeah. Ooh, what do you got there, buddy? Some beef cheeks. Very nice. Did you have any help with that cook? You had one helper. Oh, thank you, Brad. No, this guy. Oh, Spike. <laughs> yeah. We don't know who Spike is. It just started raining, and this dog just walked in the back door. We're naming him Spike. Is she usually like pretty scared of the rain? All right, it's about six hours later. We've been having a wonderful time here at the old shop cooking things up. That dog is still here and will not leave, which is kind of stressful. But uh, this Copa is done. Shrunk up quite a bit, but looking nice and barky, exactly what I was hoping for. And it's probing right around 175, 180. So I'm gonna pull this off and chill it. We'll check back in tomorrow. It's Shrimp Po' Boy Night here at the Judge Shop. Yet again, Shrimp Mountain. I've been waiting on this all night. So good. Ooh. I don't even like fish and I like this. <laughs> <laughs> One overnight chill later. Out of the fridge this thing comes and it is looking pretty cool. Definitely got that Texas style bark that I was aiming for. Loving that. And it shrunk up a lot more than I was expecting, you know? I was really thinking we we're gonna get some pork steaks like that big, but a little tiny pork steak never hurt anybody. But now what we need to do is take the strings off and hopefully we don't ruin the bark in the process. Shing. I'll just find the string, give it a little snip. And pull it all out. And there we go, de-stringed. Smells really good though. But so far, pretty happy. You can see where the string was, but didn't lose any big chunks of bark. So now we're gonna go ahead and slice this up into some steaks. So I'm gonna start by kind of nipping off this end, make some pork steak burn ends out of that or something. And just take a look at that. Beautiful smoke ring on there, looking very nice. And I only took this up to about 175, 180. And I was thinking we'd probably go a little hotter than that, but it was probing really tender. And now I'm starting to see why, because there's a whole bunch of fat in there and it is gonna be so good. But for our steaks, I'm thinking, you know, a couple fingers wide, something like this. Beautiful. And there we have it, folks, our smoky, barky little pork steaks are all cut up and looking really nice. I'm pretty pumped about this. Smells kind of like ham. Beautiful marbling, though. Now, at this point, all we really need to do is heat these up. And you can do that pretty much any way you like. You can throw it on the offset. You can pop it in the oven, pellet grill, gas grill. I think the ideal move would be to throw it on the chud box, get a little bit of that direct heat flavor. But the whole point of this recipe is for people that don't have a direct heat barbecue setup. So I think I'm gonna throw these on my charcoal grill, get a little extra smoky flavor that way, and sear them off a little bit. So let's fire up the pit. Alrighty, got this grill fired up to 300 degrees on this side, about 350 over here where the coals are. And we're gonna take these beautiful pork steaks and throw them on. I think I'm gonna start on the flat top over here, kind of build up that heat slowly without browning them too much. And then we'll maybe kiss them with a little flame at the end. And we'll throw them all on, why not? Check back in, in a little bit. So it's been probably 20 minutes and these guys are looking real nice. You can see a lot of fat coming out of these, which is helping kind of fry them up on the bottom. Let's see what they're looking like. Oh yeah, getting some good color on there. Like that, flip these over, turn them around. Ooh, that's a good one. Yes, please. I'm also gonna just grill a couple of these off. Hopefully they don't erupt in flames, but I'll tell you one thing, this is a pretty good little summer grilling item right here. And uh, I am a little concerned that these might fall apart, especially once they get really warm, but we're not really trying to cook them all the way through, right? They're already cooked. 
Just trying to get them up to a 150, 160 internal and get a little more flavor on them. But oh yeah, that's looking good. Grilled pork steaks, who knew? With smoky flavor, yes please. That is a screaming hot grill. So I'm just gonna keep grilling these off one by one till we get some really good color on these and they're warm through. Good sizzle shot, never gets old. And fresh off the grill, these are looking pretty good. Got some good color on them, looking pretty juicy, but also feeling a little tighter than I was expecting, but they're still really hot. So we're gonna let these cool down and then we'll slice on in. All right, these are cooled down. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Looks like a pork steak to me. Definitely not as tender as some of the pork steaks I've made, but I think I overcook a lot of pork steaks and I'm almost aiming for pulled pork. But these are holding up under a nice slice. Boop, smells good. And most importantly, we've got that beautiful brisket-like bark. Love it. And there it is, folks. First time doing this, but we made some pork steaks on the offset smoker with some beautiful bark. It smells like bacon in here and I'm ready to dive on in. All right, folks, let's see how this on the offset pork steak came out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that was good. It really does taste like a pork steak, which is unique because I attribute so much of that pork steak flavor to the mop sauce and that direct heat flavor. But to have that post oak smoke on there is very nice. It's a good little barbecue cut. It is kind of crispy from the grill too. A lot of textural contrast and you got that bark on the outside. It is a bit on the dry side, which is unfortunate. Probably could have smoked it a little less or maybe wrap these up and let them rest that way to heat up after I hit them on the grill. But all in all, I like the way they look. If you don't have a chud box, you can still get something pretty close to an authentic pork steak. And it just kind of tastes like bacon, which is great. I'm also gonna go for one of these little end guys here. A little burn end with all that bark on it. Wow, that's good. Ooh, crispy bark all day. Love the smoke ring on that too. Joe Yim, Joe Yim, Joe Yim, Joe Yim! Would you like to try some smoky pork steak copa roast on the offset then grilled? Yeah, that's a mouthful. Nice but catchy looks, name to that, right? Looks good. I do kind of like that crunchy exterior. Let me guess you want to put hot sauce on it. I do want to put hot sauce on it. <laughs> but I'm going to say we were at Snow's last week, mm -hmm. and I haven't had a pork steak in a long time. Mm -hmm. Very similar to it. Not cut as thick as they do over there, right? which I think works well for cooking at home, for sure. It is very bacony. Right? Yeah. When I was cutting it up into steaks, it smelled a lot like ham, and then I threw it on a griddle, and now it tastes like bacon. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would be better incorporated in a dish, like maybe on a sandwich or hit with a sauce or something like that. But, uh, you know, I've never cooked a copa before. Well, I think the fun thing about this, kind of similar to regular pork steak, is you've got all the different muscles, which are separated by all like the seams of fat mm -hmm. you know i was trying to show them earlier but you, you pick it up and it's just like falling apart <laughs> i think that's a, the bacony part yeah it. you know you got kind of different layers of fat and meat in there but pretty good for all, the amount of bark and smoke we got on this thing it's really not overpowering it tastes like less smoky than a smoked brisket or pulled yeah. pork which is interesting the smell is way smokier than tastes. yeah I was sure. kind of worried about that when I smelled it, but mm. definitely not too overpowering. Going for the hot sauce wall? Yeah, why not? Want to try a pork steak? Night. Choose your favorite. Uh, that's really good. That's pretty good. It is a little dry, but a little bit. the flavor is really good. Yeah, I expected it to be a little juicier with all the marbling, but uh, maybe yeah. I just overcooked it or something. But the pork itself tastes really good, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't know it was that big. I thought it was gonna be a lot smaller. Yeah, I thought the opposite, because in the freezer it looked huge, mm -hmm. and then when I pulled it off the pit, it was like that big. <laughs> oh, it's hot. This one's uh, good. Uh -oh. I like this one. It's good, it's hot. I mean, after eating a habanero last week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I might as well join you on one of these challenges. It's not a challenge, it's just a, uh, uh oh. That be, <laughs> that's, that's a, a challenge. challenge. <laughs> We're gonna do this together, boys. Okay. Clinkies. He's not bad. That tastes really good, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's building. Yeah. The flavor is really nice though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Woo! Cheers, boys. Cheers. Cheers. This is Joe Yen's last week in town and he got us this nice bottle for the collection, the old toasted, which I've not had before. So thank you, Joe. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Kind of chocolatey. Yeah. It's like a Rolo. I get cherry. Caramel chocolatey. Mm -hmm. I like it. We did wait a good 20 for our palates to cool off after that hot sauce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and with this very last bite of pork steak, I think it's time for the official taste test. You do it, do it, do it. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some smoky pork steaks on the offset smoker, finished on the grill. And not gonna lie, it didn't come out really as good as I think it could. The whole process was looking really great up until I threw them on the grill, and I think that was the mistake I made. Because when I put them on the flat top, it took a while for them to come up to temp, and they leaked out a lot of fat, which would explain why they were kind of dry. But the whole tying, smoking, and portioning out, I think is a really cool idea. And I'll definitely be trying this again. And when I do, I'll probably sear them off on the grill to get a little extra color on them, and then I'll wrap them in foil to warm them up the rest of the way. That way they hold on to some of that juice and come out 
even better. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you do give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.